This is the day that the Lord has made. We do rejoice and we're glad in it. Um, I must confess on days like this, it's difficult to give God thanks for the duration. But however, on days like this, we can give God thanks for his donation because our beloved brother has been a blessing to each and every one of us. Um, if, you, if he has been a blessing to you, why don't you give our Lord a big hand clap of praise um, for the life, the legacy, and the love of our brother, our brother DeMarco Banks. Um, so grateful um, for the time God has blessed him um, to be um, here on this on earth. Uh, we give God the praise. Uh, most certainly we give honor to our senior pastor, um, the Reverend Dr. Joseph L. Marshall, um, to our music ministry, to our ushers, our greeters, our staff, those of you named by name, one by one, those of you watching online, uh, we greet each and every one of you in the master's name of Jesus the Christ. Um, the program has been printed and we're gonna follow the program as it's been printed. Um, we're gonna, we've already had the processional um, we're going to have a selection by Miss Belinda Hill Beasley. After that, we'll have a prayer by Reverend Jerome Slaughter. Um, after that prayer by Reverend Slaughter, we'll have an Old Testament reading by yours truly. New Testament by Reverend Jerome Slaughter. Another selection by Miss Belinda Hill Beasley. The reading of the obituary by our very own Miss Arzella Simpson. And after that, we'll have words of comfort from our senior pastor, um, the Reverend Dr. Joseph L. Marshall. If you would join us um, in keeping this beloved family in your thoughts and prayers, we'll now have a selection by Miss Belinda Hill Beasley.
that you are still in control. God, we just, I just ask, Father, that you will bless this family right now as they're going through this sorrowful time right now. God, I ask now that you would bless them. Let them lean and depend on you, not lean to their own understanding. They might ask you why over and over and over again. But God, you are in control of everything that happens. God, bless them right now. Keep them right now. 
Father, it is in Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. I would have fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen that heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. The 27th number of Psalms, verses 13 and 14. For our New Testament scripture, words of comfort can be found in 2 Corinthians, the fifth verse, I mean, fifth chapter, verse 1. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. God words for God people. Give it honor to our Father who art in heaven. Dr. Marshall, uh, this family, the official pastors and friends. We're just going to keep praying, amen. It is praying time, it is praying time, and it is praying time. And we going to continue to pray for our youth, amen. And God bless this mother and this father. And we will keep you lifted up in prayer. Amen. I've learned how to live holy. I've learned how to live right.
Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Pastor Marshall, Miles, to the family, to all present. Good afternoon. We have the family has the resolution, the office of the county commission. May there's no matter what your what your trials are or how big your mountains seem, the Lord is there to help. We'll go through all it. So if your cross seems hard to bear and you know not what to do, the one who loves you most of all will be there. Norman J. May, District 3, Camden County Board of Commissioners. St. John Divine Mission Baptist Church, 620 East Jordan, March 28, 2004. In his own way and for his own purpose, God has called him to be the gentle spirit of our beloved member, Brother DeMarco Banks, Jr., with him with him throughout each year. Brother Banks was the son of Brother DeMarco, Sister Stephanie Banks, Sr., the grandson of Brother William Banks, Sr., the nephew of Brother William Banks, Stephanie Banks, the brother of Sister Jediah and Brother Orion Banks, and the loved one to many other members at the same time. Whereas the final chapter of this life is there are no adequate rest of the sympathy for this law, but thank God for the privilege of having known and to be a resolve that we bow in humble submission to our Heavenly Father who does all things well. We will also remind the family to be encouraged for we know to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. We pray that we emulate his good spirits, his good traits, and do the will of our Heavenly Father so that we will all be able to meet again and live with him throughout eternity. To the family, we know your loss is deep and your sorrow is great, but we want you to know that we share in your sorrow. But more importantly, we recognize that this loss is heaven's gain. Prayerfully submitted Sam Watson, church clerk, Dr. Joseph L. Marshall, senior pastor. The family of Brother DeMarco Banks is grateful for the short time that we had with him we are able to experience his love for life, the kindness of his heart, and the love he had for his family and friends. We thank you for your prayers, kind words, and expressions of sympathy. We are truly blessed to have such wonderful family and friends like you in our lives. We ask that you continue to keep us in prayer during this difficult time. The family is also asking that you will please join us for a repast after the committal service here at St. John Divine. Thank you. Um, thank you, Ms. Rosetta, for that um, wonderful job on reading. Um, we ask that you would now take this time um, to read the obituary silently for those of you who have not read it.
ask now that as I stand before your people, that God, that you would use me as your vessel to speak words of comfort, words that would be penetrating, that God, even after we leave this place on today, that there would be residual permeation within the souls and the hearts of those who've gathered to, to honor this young man. Father, um, don't let my standing be in vain. In Jesus' name, amen. Why don't you give the Lord one more hand clap of praise? Amen. Blessings to each and every one of you. We are grateful for all that has been taking place up to this point. Certainly um, for our ushers, um, media department upstairs, as well as other attendees that is making this homegoing celebration. Amen. To be what we desire for it to be. And certainly for this choir doing such a melodious and superb job lifting up Zion's songs. Amen. Never want them to think that we take them for granted. Um, family has been very expressive of being this entire celebration, about 45 minutes. If the truth be told, we are about um, 25 minutes into it. I think we are right on point, right where we need to be. I want to share a word from the Lord on this morning as God has given it to me from a very familiar passage of scripture. It is found in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 28. Again, in the book of Romans, chapter 8, and for your consideration, if you will, um, verse 28. It reads as follows, that we know that all things, they work together for the good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of our God. I want to I want to speak from you this morning from this topic if I had to tag the test with one simply put it would be finding good in a bad situation finding good in a bad situation one last time finding good in a bad situation life as we know it presents to us often the unknown anyone that would sit here and speak by way of a sovereign position, they are lying to you. When I speak of being sovereign, I'm talking about being self-ruling. The only one that is self-ruling is God himself. It means that he can do what he wants, when he wants, how he wants, with whom he wants, amen, and when he wants. Indeed, we serve a sovereign God, but we ourselves are not sovereign. It is with this thought in mind that there is a saying that many of you may have heard, and that is, is that nobody plans to fail, they just fail to plan. Say it one more time. Nobody, I don't think, in life, that if I were to solicit you, that you would say, I, I planned to fail. I don't think none of us enter into this earth saying, I want to fail. I believe that all of us want to win. It is with this desire, it is with this affection for winning that often we find the devil gives us many options to pursue such. If the truth be told, everything that glitters is not gold. However, life can seem that way. But when we turn on the television, when we look at um, some of the things that's presented unto us, the Old Testament puts it like this because the people of God, they themselves had what the Bible calls established mediums, M-E-D-I-U-M-S. Mediums is where we get our word media from. In essence, um, the Lord states to the people in the Old Testament as well as us today that get rid of the mediums. Get rid of that which stands between you and I. Because if you are not careful, the mediums or the media will give you a presentation of what they want you to know rather than what God wants you to know. If the truth be told, many of us, we all have seen the ship that hit the bridge. And if you just continue to read the news and continue to grapple with it, you would discover that speculatively there are those that are saying that they're not telling us all that needs to be said. I believe that that's the way the devil operates. 
is that oftentimes the devil will present to us, we will see things happening, and he will dress it up, he will smooth it over, and we will say stuff like, if you will, that we think we know what's going on. But if the truth be told, the devil never tells us all that needs to be known. The truth of the matter is that if anybody tells you a half lie, that's a whole, amen, a half truth, that's a whole lie. Often people won't tell you everything. They just tell you what they want you to know. So it is with life. Life has a way of showing us what it wants us to know, but it don't tell us everything. It shows us the start, but it don't show us the finish. It shows us, amen, uh, what it looks like in the beginning, but it don't show us what it looks like in the end. It is because when you consider, again, nobody plans to fail, they just fail to plan. It is even with this wise statement that I've just sounded down to your hearing that I've said this at SJD, and that is in life we need to learn how to double space. When I speak of double spacing, I am saying this, that we all should have a plan in life, but even as you establish those plans, be willing to double space. The reason why you ought to be willing to double space is because the sovereign God that we serve, that he has the divine right to edit, to adjust, and to make changes as he sees fit. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, that lets me know that there are some stuff that I don't know. If the truth be told, I had a master plan in life, but God edited it. You got to make up your mind and not get mad at God when he starts editing your life. That when God starts making changes, that when God starts making adjustments, you can't get mad at God because remember, he knows what the end is going to be. He knows what friends needs to be in our lives. He knows, amen, what job we need to have. He knows what route to get to work we need to take. He even knows, amen, um, the folk that we shouldn't even be listening to. So God sometimes will not make sense. We don't serve a God that should make sense. Matter of fact, we don't serve an ordinary God. We serve an extraordinary God. We don't serve a normal God, but we serve an abnormal God. How many of us can state in life that we've had to make adjustments? That because what we planned did not work out the way that we wanted it to. So therefore, we had to make a change on the run. I want to say it like this, and that is, is that all of us, when we're driving down the road with our cars, we all have what we call rear view mirrors. Well, when you get in your car, if you don't make the adjustments depending on your height, depending on your size, and if you go to change lanes, you are subject to get into an accident. Unfortunately, you might be subject to getting in a fatal accident if you don't make the right adjustments. Here it is because in life, we all have had this where we've had the little angel on one side on our shoulders talking to us. And we've had that little what we call the devil on the other side sitting on our shoulders also, amen, talking to us. And you got to make a decision. Which one are you going to listen to? That oftentimes, can I just raise my own hand? And that is, is that that little voice, that little devil on the side, he's been talking to me and I thought I had it going on. That little, that little devil was telling me of how much I had it going on. The devil was telling me, if you will, uh, of all this stuff I had going on for myself. But little did I know I was headed to destruction. Many of us sometimes, if you don't make the right adjustments, it won't be an accident, but it will be a fatal, uh, tragic death because we did not make the adjustments. Let me, let me go ahead and bag up and try to make this point of emphasis for those of you that are watching. And that is, is that when I played baseball at Terry Wayne Park here, I don't know if Terry Wayne Park, if they still have ball games down there anymore. 
But but when I, I played with Buffalo Rock, amen, um, we used to play against my uncle Crucia. Crucia coached, amen, Coca-Cola. And Coca-Cola, there was a dude, many of y'all may know him. His name was Sebastian Cleveland. Oh, Lord, Sebastian Cleveland. Sebastian Cleveland had a mean curveball. Every time Sebastian would get up to the pitcher's mound and Sebastian would pitch, they already had done the intel and they knew that Joe couldn't hit a curveball. So what Sebastian Cleveland would do, he'll get up to the mound, he'll throw it, and sure enough, because anybody that has played baseball, you know that a curveball looks if though it's about to hit you. But then all of a sudden, it'll break on the inside, and normally you will jump back because you were so scared that you were going to get hit. One thing I learned about how to hit Sebastian Cleveland is that I had to make an adjustment. I had to move up in the batter's box so I could catch it before it broke and made the curve. What am I trying to tell somebody today is that many of us, we miss it in life because we do not make the adjustments and step up in the batter's box in order that we can hit a home run. I want to let y'all know that at Terry Wayne Park, they had the junkyard in left field, and I actually was able to hit that ball, and I hit it, and when it hit in the junkyard, you could hear a whole bunch of noise because I had knocked Sebastian out the ballpark. What I want to let somebody know today that here it is, you're in your batter's box of life, you're trying to swing, you're trying to get on base, you're trying to hit a home run, but you keep striking out. Can I tell you why? Because you won't step up in the batter's box and make the proper adjustments, but yet you are trying to win in life. If you don't step up, you ain't going to hit a home run. If you don't make the adjustments, you're not going to be able to do what you need to do. Somebody's asking, Pastor, what in the world I got to do with the text? Because here's what research tells us, that 90% of life, here it is, is not about what happens to you, but it's about rather how you respond and make adjustments. That every time something happens, 90% of life, you can plan all you want, but 90% of life, watch this, is predicated upon how you respond to the things that come in your life. Okay, y'all still ain't with me? Let me say it like this. Um, here in the text, y'all probably thinking I, I've left the text, but the text says that all things, not some things, but all things. Here we are. We didn't plan on being here today. None of us, none of us, as God, can we gather, if you will, Lord, on this day so that we can come and unfortunately place this young man to rest? Nobody wanted to be here. Nobody asked God to be here. No, none of us, amen, um, plan for this. But guess what we got to do? We got to make some adjustments. Because, uh, amen, if we don't make adjustments, we will find ourselves right back here again and again and again. And uh, the adjustment is not with them, but the adjustment is with me. Let me say it one more time. The adjustment is not with them, but the adjustment is with me. What do you mean, Pastor? Because here it is, because all things work together for the good. Here it is. What kind of good can come out of this? Can I tell you what good can come out of it? Adjustments. Because here it is. Not only does all things work together, because here it is. Joseph Nguyen, in his book, Don't Believe Everything You Think, this is what he says. He says that all things refers to the universal intelligence of the world in which we live in. That, watch this, if you do your part, that God will do his part. That, that, that's all Joseph Nguyen was stating that. Here it is, is that in life, we don't always know 
what is going to take place. We don't always know what is going to transpire. However, as long as you understand that God is in control of all things. Okay, that ain't, that ain't tickling nobody's fancy. Here it is because you got two kind of things. You got the things which are temporary, but then you got the things which are eternal. Okay, Pastor, what in the world I got to do with why we're here today? Here it is. Um, some of this music is temporary. Okay, I knew ain't nobody going to clap right there. Can I tell you like this? Um, BET, Black Entertainment Network. Um, when BET first came out, it was so wholesome. It was so beneficial. But all of a sudden, they made an adjustment. And when they made the adjustment, they went from females looking like Clara Hustable to now looking like Sexy Red. Some of y'all don't have no idea who I'm talking about. How do you adjust from Clara Hustable all the way to Sexy Red? I asked my kid, I said, who is Sexy Red? Pull her up for me. When they pulled her up, I said, you mean tell me? That this is it? This is who the dudes are lusting after? You mean tell me that this is the one that everybody want to go watch? How do you go from Claire, the attorney, the nice, sweet Claire, to sexy red? You can either make the adjustment from Claire <laughs> to Sexy Red or you can adjust from Sexy Red to Claire but you got to make up your mind uh, what adjustment you going to make because here's what 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 18 says that the things which are seen they are temporary but the things which are not seen they are eternal you can get your behind caught up in all this temporary stuff as much as you want to. But when it has come and when it is gone, we all got to stand before the judgment seat of Christ and give an account on what we did with this man named Jesus. Okay, here it is. Here it is because here it is. Not only does all things work together for your good, but I love this point of emphasis and I'm about through. And that is all people as well. What do you mean, Pastor, all people? Because here it is. He not only takes bad things and work them out for our good, but he also takes bad people. Yeah, and work them for our good. Um, can I just go ahead and raise my hand at the chief center and say, I ain't that good now, but I'm better than I was. Can I go ahead and just raise my hand at the chief center and say, watch this, that, that I was bad. But I made up my mind that I want to make an adjustment and be good. Okay, so, so you got to decide what you're going to do. If you want to remain bad, then stay right there. But if you want to remain good, then come on over here. Because here's the thing, here's the thing. The operative word is, he works them out for our good. You can't work on bad and expect to be good. Y'all missed that point of emphasis right there. You, 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 can't, you can't work bad and good at the same time. Um, it is amazing how that many of us, we think that we can just live our lives any old raggedy kind of way and then expect good to come out of it. If you want good, you got to work on good. Because here it is, as long as the earth remains, there will always be seed time and harvest time. One more time. As long as the earth remaineth, 
There will always be seed time and harvest time. Here we are, here we are. I'm promised I'm through my last minute. Here we are, we're celebrating on Sunday. We're celebrating how that Jesus got up. Amen. Well, in our celebrating of how Jesus got up, here's the thing I want to share with you. I received some mail. Amen. Bro, Cadillac, I received some mail, and I was excited because, you know what the mail said? It said that your grandmother, Hattie Marshall, that there is some unclaimed property. Yeah, I ain't, I ain't pursued it yet. I don't know what grandma had. It, it says, it says, you need to contact us immediately because there is some stuff that she had that's unclaimed, some property, some land. So when I leave here later on today, I'm calling the phone number and see, I don't know if it's a hoax, Justin, or what, but, but you never know. So here's the thing is that I want to let somebody know today that God told me to tell you that I got some stuff for you. Watch this. That has not yet been claimed. And all you got to do is I'm going to call the phone number, but all you got to do is call on the name of Jesus. And he's going to say, look, I got some stuff that's just been waiting on you the whole time. You think the world got it going on for you. Come on over on the Lord's side because I can make some adjustments in your life that the things you used to do, you won't do no more. That the places you used to go, you won't go no more. And I'll take everything that was meant for your bad and work it out for your good. That's all I want to say. Um, I want every young person to stand, if you don't mind. I want every young person. Somebody say, Pastor, how do you define young? Well, I'll let you make that determination. Somebody say, some of y'all standing, you ain't young. Some of y'all think you're young. Y'all ain't young. I'll let you stand anyway. Look, look, some, some of y'all. Young, at heart, I don't think I said at heart, I said young, look, seriously, seriously to the young people, little DeMarco, um, there's a family that's saddened, there's a family that is mourning, there's a family that is asking themselves, what could we have done? There's a family asking themselves, maybe if I had done this, maybe if I had done that, who would have thought at 15 years old, restrict us driver's license, that we would be here with this young man and this mom and his dad, as well as all of these other family members. I'm not speaking derogatorily. I'm not minimizing you all, but all I ask of you is make a decision on what you're going to do. I'm a witness that if you choose Jesus, not just choose him, but live your life for him, there's some stuff that he got for you. You ain't got to watch the video. Do y'all know all that making it rain and the dollars and all that? Look, I've been on the set in L.A. when they making all this stuff. Do y'all know that's fake money? It ain't even real money. The mansion they standing in front of, they rented the mansion to make the video. You can't get caught up in what you see because what you see is temporary but what you don't see is eternal in the heavens every young person I want you to bow your head with me for a second Lord we thank you for every young person under the sound of my voice we are grateful God because you have them alive for a reason 
God, there's a purpose for their existence. Lord, we thank you because we know that via this prayer, that God, if it's just one that will make that change, if there is just one that would make that adjustment, if there is just one God that will cease what you got in store for them, we're going to praise you in advance. One God that will drown out the noise of the world and the propositions thereof in knowing God that Lord, you know the thoughts that you think it towards them. Thoughts of peace, not of evil, in order to give them an expected end. Lord, touch their lives right now. That even after this day has come and gone, don't let them lose the sorrowfulness of the time in which we've gathered. In Jesus' name, amen. Look, if there's someone here today, just 30 seconds, just 30 seconds, um, everybody's standing except for the family. If there is one person here that wants to give their life to the Lord, you want to make a change. You want to make an adjustment. Look, not for shape, form, nor fashion. But if you're here today and you're saying, Pastor, that if I were to die right now, that I'm not certain where I would spend all of eternity. You can come now while the blood is still running warm in your veins. We've done all we can do for little DeMarco, but what are you gonna do? One, one call, one call. We are all we can do is offer Christ to you. Look, um, look, we, we used to call it Booker T. Washington, ladies and gents at Washington. Ain't none of them ladies and gents going to be with you when you stand before Jesus. Ain't none of these folk going to be with you. It's just going to be you and the Lord. As bold as we can be, I want you to be so bold and come to this altar. Will there be one right here? Will there be one? Will there be one? Will there be one going once? Will there be one going twice? Amen. Amen. We Amen. I see y'all young ladies. I see you. Thank you for your boldness. Oh Thank you for your boldness. Brother. Amen. Amen. We Thank you. Thank you for your boldness. Thank you for your boldness. Thank you, young ladies. Amen. Thank you, young ladies. Amen. Amen. Will there be anyone else that will come? We have all of these young women, all of these young women. So you trying to tell me that all these men are saved, that all these men are certain, that if you were to die right now where you would spend all eternity, all these men certain. Amen. I see you, bro. I see you. I see you, bro. Amen. I see you, young man. I see you. I see you. I see you. Amen. Oh I see you, bro. I see you. I see you. I see you. Oh, come on. Come on. Yes, Y'all make some room on the altar if you don't mind. Just slide that way if you don't mind. God bless you all. God, come on. Come on. One last call. One last call. One last call. softly look I wanted to come down near you all I wanted to be by you because look don't let this suit fool you all of us got a soul that needs to be saved look I was right where you are right now. Raised in a Christian home. But I started to make adjustments, dude, that didn't line up with how I was raised. And watch this. You have an opportunity to make a change right now, dude. Look, don't let this young man's life be in vain. 
There's a reason why you're here. There's a purpose why you're here, young lady. I want you to do something for me. Here's what the Bible states in Romans 10, 9. That if we confess to the Lord Jesus Christ, look what we're confessing. We're not confessing everything we've done. We're just confessing, look, Lord, I can't live my life without you. That's right. If you're on this altar saying, Pastor, look, dude, I don't even know you. But guess what? I want to know him. Well, he said, if you say you can't live your life without him, are you saying, I want you all to repeat after me and answer this question. Are you saying you can't live your life without the Lord? Y'all go ahead and answer. Are you saying you can't live your life without the Lord? Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Amen. Bruh, I, I want you, I want you to lead the way. Say it, bruh. Are, are you saying you can't live your life without the Lord? No, I can't. Amen. Bruh, are you saying you can't live your life without the Lord? No, sir. Amen. He said, no, sir. Amen. Are y'all saying you can't live your life without the Lord? Amen. Huh? Amen. Amen. Watch this. Do y'all believe that Jesus died? Do you believe that? Okay. Well, watch this. Do you believe he rose from the dead? Amen. Y'all said that emphatically. Yes. Yes. Well, guess what? That's all you got to do. That if you confess the Lord Jesus, that if you believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, guess what, young lady? You're saved. You ain't hung from no lights. You ain't turned over no pews. But guess what? You are saved based on your faith in God. Now watch this. Now that you're saved, you need a church where you can continue to grow in the Lord. Y'all don't have to don't join St. John Divine. We would love for you to join St. John Divine. But you don't have to join St. John Divine. Look, if you're here today, if you're here today, and you want to be a part of this church or whatever church you want to go to because here it is, I take my job seriously. And I'm not going to send you out here and I don't know how to reach you or help you. If you're here today saying you want to unite with this church, just raise your hand. If you don't, that's okay. if you don't want to join this church, then don't. But if you want to join this church, raise your hand real high. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Look, look, put your hand down. This is what I want y'all to do. We getting ready to close because we got to get to the burial site. I'm asking the ushers right quick, if you can have a piece of paper out there so that we can, I want them to write their name and your phone number, okay? Your name and your number, and you're gonna hear either from me or the church directly because I love y'all just that much, all right? So ushers, look, get, get a piece of paper and a pen for they can put their name and their phone number so that we can contact you, all right? Amen. Come on, church. Let's give the Lord a big hand clap of praise for all these young people. out those stickies and writing Joe Mars and Son Funeral Home they're coming now they're going to give us further instructions as to what they want us to do but I'm asking that you would please write your information down we have a strong youth department already active we ain't new to this we true to this 
Um, so as you get that information, amen. Reverend Jesse, win your hands. Thank you, Pastor Marshall. At this time, we're going to prepare to go to the cemetery. Those of you who are going, we do ask you, please put your headlights on and your four-way flashers. Please remain in the right-hand lane. If any reason that you have to get out of the procession, we do ask that you would turn off to your right. Do not cross into the left-hand lane for safety purposes. Also, we ask that you would please stay as possibly close to the automobile in front of you as we approach intersections because we don't want to leave a big gap in between the cars. On behalf of our lead film director, Mr. Alpha Stallworth, Mr. David Hawkins, owner and all staff of Joe Morris and Son Funeral Home, thank you so much for sharing with the family. Please continue to keep them in your prayers. Paul Bears, would you please come up front? Those designated as Paul Bears as well as flower attendants, please. Everyone stand except for the family, please. Thank you so much. Excuse me. 